course it's back to the college. Um, Ariel, as you know, is set in beautiful hills and they were badly damaged by the floods, the roads, so as you drive in it's a bit of a trek. I guess we would say it's a long time since I've been to Arionga, so I was very impressed to see the work that had been done there. And um, Nick might I add, uh, if, if you get a moment, do take the opportunity to talk to him. I think he was actually doing a presentation later on. You'll be lucky to get a word in my lad. <laughs> He's so proud of his community and I think what they've achieved as you drive in, he manages to show you the different things they've put on. I guess I'm about to officially launch the Arionga Best Practice video for school. <laughs>
On the construction of the pool, there was a number of safety factors that we took into consideration. The fence was the first one we thought because we've got to try and stop people and animals. Very important of getting into the pool. And the pool is permanently lit at night. If anyone or anything does get in the pool, it can be seen. It's not lost in the darkness. All around the pool was synthetic grass put down. It does a very good job of keeping the pool clean and tidy and it's easy to pick up any rubbish that you see. We put a lip, we called it a hob, right the way around the pool. It's 400 millimetres high by 400 millimetres wide. That again is a safety factor. Why we did that was little kids, ones that can't walk it. When they crawl, they've got to try and crawl up and over that lip. That will be difficult. We hope by the time that mothers will see that happening, the child won't fall in the pool. Building the swimming pool created employment. By building the swimming pool, we created employment for one guy part-time, one hour a day to two hours a day on checking the filters, the pumps, uh, the chlorination, and all the things you need to check, which is a daily process on a pool. Very, very important for hygiene. The other thing, that when the pool is open, we've created two part-time jobs for two ladies. <laughs> Maintenance on the pool is a very important factor. We estimate at the moment we're only spending between one and two hours a day on daily maintenance. As the pool gets older, this possibly can increase and we're going to have the maintenance of machinery that will break down. The maintenance of the pool, the community has decided, will come out of the profits of their community store. All the parents got worried about the little kids. They've been going down that water and the kids have been getting sick. The health of the children is the most important thing. If we can sanitise the water to where the health of the children will improve, it's going to be a great advantage to them swimming. We have done that by adding the salt, the chlorine and the other chemicals. We can try and control any skin disease that the children have and it will help them with their ears, eyes and nose, we hope too. Yeah, it's good for the kids to swim in the pool. Sometimes we check their ears and look at their skin for scabies. The swimming pool is sort of like a medicine to get rid of all the sores and all that. Kids love swimming and we are happy about a new swimming pool. Well,
Wednesday night in the casino at Darwin and the presentations of the Best Practice Award are going to take place tonight. Still on stage, we have uh, a certificate for highly commended, which goes to the Ariambi community.
picture here if I could please, for those of you who haven't been to Arionga. We're approximately 230 kilometres due west of Alice Springs. We live in the desert. We live in the West McDonald Range, which is called the James Range actually we live in. The one on my right. Daphne was born at a place called Tent Hill, which is about 30 kilometres north west, I think, of Arionga. And Daphne was born underneath the gum tree there. There's nothing at Tent Hill. Absolutely nothing. So they're special people to Arirongga, and they feel this is their path of reconciliation. This is the year of reconciliation, and we're all talking about it. This is their way of showing how they would like to participate in reconciliation. I think it was in November, it might have been October, I might have one years my months wrong. We were down in Canberra, and we were given the same opportunity in Canberra, whereby Two of the ladies sang in Parliament House. When they sang, the traditional owner of Canberra got up and said to her knowledge, this was the first time that traditional ladies in their own language had actually got up and sung in Parliament House. We were very proud of that. Tonight, the ladies would like to do the same again. Daphne was in Canberra. We had another lady with us in Canberra. She was unable to come, so Yupia filled in for her. But they've picked a couple of tunes, or a couple of songs, that they would like to do for you tonight. Thank you very much. My English, the Lord, my shepherd. 